Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video where we are exploring building patches from scratch on the Korg Op6. Now, in the recent 2.0 uh, firmware update for the Op6, uh, we got the new effects um, operator mode, and uh, that introduced really a, a bunch of different operator types, really, if you, if you look at it uh, that way. But probably the one that was most exciting to a lot of people, and certainly most exciting to me, was the addition of the comb filter. So why is the comb filter interesting? Well, uh, the comb filter is interesting because it allows us to do some sorts of physical modeling tricks. Um, why is that? Well, the comb filter, although it's called a uh, filter, it's really built around a, a very, very short delay architecture. Um, so what happens when you have a uh, delay, uh, a very short delay? So this is a, you know, really quite short delay. This is the comb filter set going as long as possible and you can hear there that we're hearing those individual uh delays happening in there i'm just exciting this delay with a little burst of noise but if we turn up the frequency past a certain point much like um pushing an lfo into audio rate and starting to hear a pitch when we make a delay very very short what we get instead of um, hearing the individual delays, we hear a pitch. And it's a pitch which um, is somewhat similar to what happens when you pluck a string. When you excite a string, uh, that uh, excitation sort of pings up and down the string and it sets up the resonance and you get the, the sound of a string being plucked. And that's kind of what we hear with a comb filter. What's interesting or useful with the comb filter in, in the case of the way it's implemented on the effects operator on the OP6 is that its delay uh, time uh, tracks the keyboard properly and proportionately so that we can play it not just in a pitched method but following the keyboard as well, which is really good. And you can even hear with a very, very basic uh, burst of noise into a single comb filter that we get pluck string style sounds but we can of course take this idea a little bit further and that is what we are going to be doing today okay so it's always good to start these things with a plan and here is my plan so what i want to do is set up a um, physical model of an instrument where each note that you play is actually uh, five strings all being excited at the same time. So if you think about like a mega mandolin <laughs> or, uh, well, I mean, if you think about a piano, actually, uh, a standard piano actually is, is three strings per note. Um, so similar idea here, we're just taking it a little bit further uh, than, we, uh, <laughs> than we would on a piano. Um, what I'm also going to do with these strings rather than on a piano where they're all tuned in unison, the slight detuning is where you get the um, the, the, the interest in the piano sound. I'm going to take that to uh, a bigger extreme here and I'm actually going to tune each of our strings, each of our comb filters to uh, different notes, mostly probably just within octaves and fifths. Um, I think it will probably work best, um, but we'll see what we're going to achieve there. Uh, other things that I want to do here, I want to make it so that um, when we are exciting the string, we can either pick it or bow it within the same patch. Um, uh, and also I'd like to make it so that playing uh, the keyboard differently is going to, uh, in the same way, uh, if you're a guitarist, you can get different um, sharpness of sounds by how you angle your plectrum. If you come down on the edge of the plectrum, you get a, a, a much more sort of attacky sound. And if you come down flat, you get a, a sort of a, a more sort of tubby sound. I want to be able to um, build that into the patch, probably based around velocity. So uh, we can get sort of sort of thinner and and fatter sounds from our patch as well. Uh, is there anything else? I will probably stick a whole lot of modulation into the strings so the strings can be ch subtly changing length, which is harder to do in reality, of course, uh, but I think we'll probably uh, need to quite an interesting uh, sound. Uh, well, yeah, obviously there'll be effects added in there as well because we can. Uh, uh, and we'll also have to think about other things that we can do in the mod matrix actually as we get further into the patch perhaps. So in terms of building this, we'll, we'll go for a user algorithm again. And if you um, have watched the filter bank uh, video that I did uh, a couple of weeks back, this sort of layout here is going to look very familiar. We've got a single uh, thing that's being split across the other five uh, operators. So uh, operator one 
will be our exciter, uh, which is going to be a, a, a shaped burst of noise. And we're going to use the filter mode for that so that we can um, uh, cut out um, frequencies as we need to, uh, to get the right sort of sound from the exciter. We can even play with that filter cutoff to get different sounds um, sort of within the, 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 um, the plane, perhaps within the mod matrix. And then um, our remaining uh, operators, operators two through six, they're going to be our strings. So they're all going to be in comb filter mode. Um, for the most part, I think they're going to have their oscillator mix turned down. So they won't be generating um, their own oscillator. They'll just be um, taking uh, the excitation signal from operator one and resonating with it. But I might play with sort of fading in some um maybe they can have their own noise generators as well we can we can play with bring them in to have like drones or uh, constantly bowed sounds like sort of hurdy-gurdy type things perhaps um yeah so that there's there's things we can do and will do um but we ought to probably get started by building our user algorithm first so as with a lot of um these patches we're going to start by um, coming over to the algorithm page push that over to user and come into the miscellaneous menu and set up our user algorithm. Um, weirdly, there's not a user algorithm that, that's defined this way. So yeah, that is what it is. Uh, so we're coming to page two and we want our operators two through six. We'll come back to here. Operators two through six to be uh, what we actually hear. So we'll turn on two, three, four, five, and six. And then in terms of what is rooted into everything, um, one is not going to receive anything from anything. And then as we come down, we're going to go one into two, one into three, one into four, one into five, and indeed one into six. It's a pretty simple user algorithm. Um, there's probably some something that can be done with pushing each string back into each other so they're resonating against each other perhaps we'll play with that a little bit to see what that does whether that works out for us um but that will be a good starting point i think so we'll start by just setting up a, a single um string being excited first um rather than trying to um, build the whole patch all at once and then we can do some copy and pasting actually probably uh, between the operators to get that working for us so let's start by setting up our um first string and the excitation thereof so um operator one is going to be our excitation uh, signal so it's going to be some noise going through a bandpass filter so that we can shape it uh, and we can also shape it across the keyboard if we need to as well because the filter mode will uh, track the keyboard very useful so uh, i'm just going to come into the filter mode oscillator mix will turn up to full um, we'll just leave cutoff and resonance where they are to begin with, but we'll, we'll tweak them as we go along. And I'm going to start by giving us a little bit of white noise. Uh, the blue noise works really well in this situation as well. Um, but um, having played with this a little bit um, for a couple of weeks, white noise and a bandpass filter gives you a little bit more flexibility because the blue noise uh, cuts out so much of the low end, you can't really get it back on the low notes but your mileage may vary. That's what I'm going with uh, for this patch though. Um, so uh, at the moment uh, we'll get a noisy FM sound because operator two is still set in FM mode. That's not what we want. So we're gonna come across to the effects mode. We're going to go to the comb filter. We're going to turn down its oscillator mix at the moment, but I'm going to just set this up as blue noise, uh, oops, uh, blue noise because that's be, uh, that'll be what I'll want to put into the uh, the comb filter, um, uh, possibly, anyway. Uh, and uh, we'll turn the feedback up fairly high. We can kind of hear that sort of bowed sound. So let's set up our um, envelopes a little bit. Uh, so the first thing on operator two, our first string, I'm just going to have it instantly attack, sustain as hard as it can. And I'm just going to set the, the decay long, uh, so the release long, um, anti-linear because we want the comb filters 
delay feedback to die down naturally and not necessarily be truncated by the release envelope. So at the moment, uh, we've got kind of a instant on bowed sound. Um, and how we're exciting this string, whether it's a pluck, whether it's a bow, it's all going to be down to the level envelope of operator one. So as a starting point, I want this to be a fairly short plucked sound. And um, we'll come back to this maybe to fine tune it as we go along. So uh, for a pluck sound, we will drop the sustain down to uh, zero and we'll drop this decay um, pretty short. It's quite quiet at the moment. Which is a, <laughs> I've heard worse guitar. Maybe lute sounds. Um, not very loud at the moment. You have to be quite careful with the volume on these patches because it does fluctuate quite a lot. Um, part of the reason I suspect that it's not very loud at the moment is because of where the filter is currently set. Um, uh, so um, we're going to change this over to a band pass. I'm going to use probably the yeah, there we go. The 12 um, dB per octave bandpass there. That's all right, isn't it? I mean, as a starting point, that's that's not a bad sound. Um, so the, the reason it was so quiet to begin with is because we we're on low pass mode. So much, most of the um, the energy from the noise has been wiped out whereas in bypass mode uh, band pass mode sorry it's kind of going to be a bit um, more um, uh, focused now if we bring it down yeah if we bring it down an octave because of the way that this um, filter mode tracks the keyboard probably gonna be too dark there so we probably want to bring the cutoff up a bit to balance this out so we want our lower octaves to kind of have enough energy in them. Uh, and if we need to make the upper octaves darker, then we can do that with our master filter. And we probably will play with that as we go along. Um, Okay, I think that's sort of working. Uh, let's um, let's just try bringing in a little bit of resonance to see how that sounds. So that's going to change the the shape of the excitation. Sort of becomes more of a like a banjo, right? I think we can basically have that um, turned down. As I say, the, the way that we excite this string is all down to the um, the level envelope of this first operator here. So if we want something really, really, really tight and plucky, we can bring this decay right down. You can see that's a very bright, precise excitation, whereas as we had it longer, it was a little tubbier. It's probably a good middle ground. And if we go much longer, it's kind of like a, a, a bow that's been pulled off the string. And if we want to have something that bows into the sound, we can increase our attack. So by balancing those two parts of our envelope, we can get different uh, attack characteristics to the way that we're exciting the string. And that's something that we're definitely going to play with um, in the uh, V patch in the mod matrix. I think probably especially around how hard we're playing and maybe we could assign the attack to the modulation or something. But we'll come back to that once we've uh, built up some more strings, I think. So as per the plan, uh, what I want to do is uh, replicate this first string across these other operators here 
but then have them tuned differently so that they create a nice um, thick um, rich sound and then we can look at detuning them on top of that to make it much richer as well so i could go through and manually build all of these cross but there is actually something in the miscellaneous menu in uh, the op utilities here which allows us to copy uh, operators from one to another so what i'm going to do is go from two to three yes two to four yes two to five yes and two to six yes good okay easy as that I'm just going to make sure these are all turned down because otherwise it's going to get really loud really quickly. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on that volume control. Um, so that's just the one string there. Bring the second string, it's just going to get louder essentially because it's doing exactly the same thing. And we're talking about digital delay here, so it's very, very tightly coupled. But if we come across to um, operator three and we change the frequency here, which is um, intrinsically linked to, um, uh, to, to pitches, You can hear now that we have two different strings resonating at different frequencies. Cool. Uh, so let's maybe, um, actually I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we will have this one set where it was and we we'll maybe set uh, this first one down an octave. So now we have two strings. Which are um, octaves apart. Just keep an eye on that volume. Then we can bring up the next string here, um, which is on operator four, and maybe we can we can set this one a fifth above, so that we plus seven here. So now we have this string, we have this string, we have this string. And you can hear on the higher pitch strings that they don't sustain as long because the uh, the feedback naturally dies down because it's pro uh, proportional to the number of times that it repeats, which is also what would happen on a, on a real string as well. So that's good physical modeling for free. Um, so uh, that's a fifth up. Maybe we'll go uh, an octave up on this one, so plus 12. Again, just keep an eye on that volume. And then operator six, uh, maybe we'll have that one um, set to unison with the first one, but we will just gently bring down shift, just slightly detune it so it's always off that first one a little bit. So not a whole, oh, ugh, too much, <laughs> just a little bit. So we could do that, or we could go like two octaves down. Should try that instead. Yeah, maybe we'll go two octaves down instead. That's that's nice. Um, although I now wish I ordered them differently, but I will allow my OCD just to fester instead. Um, so uh, good. Okay, that's starting to sound like a, a big, rich instrument. Uh, but let's uh, introduce some detuning between the notes, uh, between the strings, and also between the notes, actually. So we're going to make use of some random FOs to just slightly nudge the frequencies of all of these about on a per voice basis. So we get that richness between the notes as well as uh, sort of um, uh, uh, within a note as well. So we're not just detuning every string by the same amount on every note. Each note will be slightly different, which is kind of what you would get on piano because you can't tune a piano absolutely perfectly uh, across the entire soundboard. So uh, let's come into our mod menu here and we're going to come down to our LFOs uh, and I'll use two different LFOs to do this so I can send some in one direction, some in another direction and that sort of thing and then we'll leave LFO one for other things. I haven't decided quite what yet, maybe just straight up pitch bend, <laughs> who knows. Uh, so we're going to set each of these per voice first of all and uh, then we're going to come down and we'll probably go with the random level and time just so it's like straight up random constantly random level and time on the other one as well we'll slow them down so it's not obviously wandering it's more that um 
each time we play a note, really, it's going to start in a different place. Uh, slow that down. Cool. Lovely stuff. Great. Um, one slight disadvantage of doing it this way with multiple LFOs and not using LFO 1. It's probably a bit wasteful in the V patch, but I don't think we're going to run out of slots. I hope not. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll find out. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start introducing this change in... Actually, do you know what? Let's, let's not risk it. <laughs> I've changed my mind. We'll use LFO1 as a random one as well so that we can just assign this in the pitch menu as well. Um, there we go. I got paranoid. We'll use LFO3 as our, as our auxiliary one, perhaps. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so the reason I'm doing this is that LFO1 is hardwired to uh, pitch within each of the uh, oscillators, and that's going to affect the delay time anyway. So it just means that I don't have to use um, a couple of V patch slots to get this going. Right, so let's start introducing a little bit of pitch wobble. So you could hear then immediately that you're starting to get interesting chorusing and phasing. So at the moment, that's only one of the strings. Uh, so we'll come down. I won't go to the next one. We'll go to one of the higher ones, and we'll maybe detune it by the same amount as the other one's getting tuned up. Immediately, that richness is coming in here, which is a lot more evident than it was with um, everything being tuned the same way. So that's one and sorry, two and five that I've put some movement on already so uh we'll put some on three and four in the v patch so destination will be op three pitch source is going to be lfo2 and up by a bit and then we'll do lfo3 again sorry lfo2 again silly me lfo2 good and here this can be op four pitch, go down by the same amount. Short notes aren't holding out so well, though. but there we go. Uh, cool. Nice bit of richness in there. Good stuff. That's all nice. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to do next? Well, I want to get into shaping the sound velocity-wise a little bit, but I want to give this uh, a little bit more space. So we might put a bit of reverb on it, but one thing that I think would be quite nice if we come into um, a spare slot here in the V patch is to have this behave a little bit like a piano if the piano was mic'd in stereo. That is that low notes go to one end of the panning and high notes tend towards the other note side of the panning so you have that kind of movement as you play across so it's sort of like getting inspiration from lots of different instruments here so um, what we can do uh, to get that is uh, obviously our destination is going to be uh, panning and our source can be the keyboard note um, and this works bipolar as far as I can tell um, so this means that if I just set the intensity up a bit I might dial it back from this but if you're listening in headphones you can hear that high notes are up here low notes are down here it's probably a little bit extreme but we can have it a little more subtly it just adds a nice bit of spatialization to the sound which just gives it a little bit more realism I think um, makes everything sound a little bit more in an acoustic space without having to add any uh, reverb that being said it is me so let's add a little bit of reverb um, not much <laughs> not much he says And we can tweak the reverb and the rest of the effects later, but now we sound like we're in a nice space, I think. Everything sounds a little bit more real, a little less synthesized. So I think at the moment everything's a little bit 
bright because there's no inherent dampening in the uh, sound of the comb filter. There's no um, a filter that's in the feedback loop, which is what you ideally want when you're generating these string sounds. I think what we'll do is we'll just add um, a little bit of filter uh, over the whole sound, and then we will uh, start to build up a bit more of an expressive way of playing. So um, I'm just going to go, I always go for the Poly 6 one. I might try other ones um, as we go on, but I just want to darken the sound a little bit. So we'll darken it and then we'll put a bit of resonance on there so that at the cutoff we get a tiny boost. So that's without. That's with, we'll probably get a bit darker. It also adds a little, a little bit of grit as well, that particular filter type. If we didn't like the grit, we could always try. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, cool. Uh, right, so let's come back around to our exciting uh, signal here. And by exciting signal, I mean the signal that's exciting it. This is probably the least <laughs> sonically exciting uh, sound that's in here at the moment. Um, and I'm going to just make it a little bit pingier, I think, because I can hear the fade out at the moment. Uh, okay, so um, I'm also going to set the curve to exponential. I'm just off exponential so we can get it really tight. Okay, so let's start with the most basic form of um, uh, getting some more uh, expressiveness in here, which is just straight up velocity sensitivity. I'm not going to apply any velocity sensitivity to the strings instead in the same way that you would pick uh, or play lighter on an acoustic stringed instrument. Um, we're just going to change how much we're exciting the strings instead. So we can come into the uh, third page of the level for that operator, operator one, and we'll just start to put in some velocity sensitivity so somewhere around 40, 50. Might need to go further than that. Okay. Uh, yep, I think that's getting somewhere. It's not quite as extreme as I would maybe hope. So uh, maybe another thing that we can do, if we come into the pitch for this, remember that this is in filter mode, so that the pitch is going to be um, intrinsically linked to our cutoff. Our oscillator type is a noise type, so we don't get any pitch variation in that. Anyway, we can apply some pitch um, velocity, which is going to open up the filter on this operator more the harder we play. So let's... Doesn't need to be much, I don't think. We probably want to lower the overall cutoff. Yeah, that's good. Give us a little bit more to play with there. But I think um, beyond this, we can also get a, a bit more tonal variation by messing with the decay portion. As well. So maybe for quieter, quieter notes, that decay can be really tight. And as we hit harder, we can make that decay longer and therefore get a bit more of the body of the excitation as well. So uh, to do that we're going to want to go into the V patch menu 
and we can find a spare slot. What's going on there? Why not? Did I just not set that going? I don't think I did, did I? There we go. Um, a spare slot. Yeah, I set it on the wrong one. There we go. That was just the detuning uh, that didn't quite set up properly. And um, here we can go on keyboard, velocity, and the destination can be the decay portion of operator one. So we're looking for decay time there. We don't want it to quite sound bowed. See there now, we've got a really expressive way of playing. It feels very natural. Good stuff. Yeah, there we go. Lovely. Okay. That is some nice playing there. I wonder, mm, I wonder if we could even for very I wonder if for, for lighter notes we could have a little bit of raspy attack there as well and then the much stronger attack for harder notes so we could do the same trick but in reverse we could set this uh just ever so slightly longer there and then in the v patch do the opposite which is we could take the velocity of the keyboard send it to the attack this time of operator one we want to make it shorter this time Yeah, so now for sh for quieter notes, it almost feels like we're raking the string with a with a pick, and then much more obviously plucking it for the. harder notes. It's about finding the balance between these uh, two parameters a little bit. Yeah. And, and on top of this, let's layer up this expressiveness because that's often where all the magic kind of happens anyway. Um, we could also maybe make the overall sound a little darker. And then uh, have uh, velocity effect the filter uh, which doesn't have a default routing weirdly um, but we can just plumb that in, in the v patch anyway so we can again do uh, keyboard velocity goes to filter this time cut off Excuse all the white note C major playing. <laughs> I'm a terrible keyboardist. Really expressive to play now. Yes, good stuff. 
wonder if we can go even darker now. At its darkest. Great. Okay, good. That's all coming together quite nicely. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, well, uh, one of the things I said is I wanted to be able to properly bow this. Um, so I was thinking maybe on the modulation wheel, if we turn the modulation wheel up, we get a sustained bow sound that we can kind of bring in and out as we want to as we're playing. So uh, what that would mean in principle is that when we turn the modulation wheel up, we're going to want to increase the attack time of our excitation signal quite a lot. But I think the other crucial thing there is that we're going to want to give it a sustain as well. Like that. I think that will be pretty um, nice to have as an option with the um, with the mod wheel there. So uh, what do we want to do in order to set that up? Uh, so we'll come into the V patch again and we will uh, come across to a spare slot and our source obviously is going to be our mod wheel. And the destination again is going to be an op one. The first thing is we will give it uh, an attack time. We want to make the attack time uh, longer. So we'll just turn this all up and just see. What's the longest we want it? Maybe something like that, I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, and then we will also do the same thing, mod wheel, destination op one, and this time we want to turn up the uh, sustain. I just kind of want to work out where that resting point is. It's probably not that high, like maybe around there. And we should still have a faster bow if we play harder as well. Uh, sustain is probably a bit loud for those loud notes. You may also want to lengthen the decay time as well, maybe. Just a tiny bit. So it's not quite as... Uh, and we have different versions of that in the mod wheel as well. So we can have just a little bit of hurdy-gurdy drone going on in the back there. If we have the mod wheel turned up a little bit. Something like that, I think, works. <laughs> That's nice and high note. Uh, like that. Now, one of the things that I left over while I was just setting this patch up to begin with was that I, um, on each of the individual operators, I did also just leave uh, a blue noise source. So we do also have the option on a per string basis to bring in a drone but just on that one string. which is also pretty interesting. And this, is, this isn't a proper drone because it, it is actually decaying here, it's just that the decay is set really long. And that gives you a very different vibe on top of what we already had. And we can have the plucked. This is crying out for some more reverb and delay I think now we could also be modulating these amounts somehow now I kind of feel like this is the obvious <laughs> uh, 
thing to have on aftertouch if if we actually had aftertouch available to us on the keyboard that might be where we would put it but maybe we can make use of our spare lfo somewhere or maybe we just have this as a performance control i don't know i mean ideally as i say i'd probably stick this on on aftertouch but sadly uh that's not available to us on the op6 right now So I think we're getting into the fine tuning part of this. Um, so I think there's probably space for a little bit more effects. Um, we can maybe look at just fine tuning the bowing behavior. But I think probably I'll just stick on an arpeggiator <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. Um, do I want that or do I want? Yeah, maybe that. Okay. Um, Let's, uh, sorry, <laughs> go talk to us. Cool. Uh, so, um, what do we think? Um, are those high notes too high? I think we're probably okay. One thing we could try maybe is in the filter mod, just put a bit of keyboard tracking on the high. Just so that those high notes aren't so sort of artificially high. So here we're just, um, as we go higher up the keyboard, we're just lowering the filter a little bit just to take out some of that harshness. I think that's certainly doing no harm. I think it's probably doing a little bit of, a little bit of good. Uh, so I think we can probably put on some delay. <laughs> Just save this because it's nice, isn't it? Um, I think we can put on some delay. I, no one's going to be cross with us for adding delay, I don't think. <laughs> this should probably be tempo sync, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, the world is our oyster for the rest of it. Mm. Chorus would be nice. Yeah, any, any number of things would be nice, I think, probably. But I do wonder whether, if we just approach this from a purely utilitarian perspective, whether actually just boosting the low end might be beneficial here. And maybe just ducking out a little bit of the upper mids. So we can use our EQ here. Maybe lower mids. Just polishing it up a little bit. And then we've got to this quite pleasant <laughs> point. Um, let's take it down out to show. Or maybe we'll do a uh, there's just so many chords. Pro level chords perhaps. Uh, so what can we do from a performance perspective here? Uh, well uh, one of the things that we've definitely got available to us is the idea of actually fading the strings out and rebalancing them. Because remember, we've got all these five strings, they don't all need to be ringing out the same amount. So much like with our filter bank patch, we don't have to have all of these going all at once. And actually, there might be some interesting nuances that are available to us. By balancing these differently because we don't always want ultimate richness. 
Not all the time. It's fun sometimes. And I think from a performance perspective, we shouldn't overlook the, how nice it sounded just to turn on one of the comb filters oscillator mixes and just let that bliss out for a little while. Slay this down. It just adds just that. It's like living by the sea, but the sea is a string. I mean, we really probably should have an LFO doing that, shouldn't we? Let's try that. Let's just pick two of them, probably in the middle. Uh, so we've got a spare LFO, LFO3, which is on random mode, I think. Uh, so we can come into the V patch here. LFO3, destination. Probably operator threes. Or do we have access to that on the... Do you know what? I don't know if we do. We don't have the oscillator mix. as a destination. Devastating. Hello, oscillator sync from the future. I was wrong. It is in there. It's at the start of the effects menu, though. It's not on a per effect basis. So it's right after the folder oscillator mix. There is a slot uh, in the vpatch destinations for the effects oscillator mix so uh, yeah we could have had things fading in and out uh, but uh, I missed that so sorry about that devastating okay those will have to be real hands doing that not invisible hands and of course we can also play with the uh, various different feedback amounts here so for example um, our higher pitched one here on five we can maybe push the feedback a little higher because it's going to die off more quickly. And this very low one, similarly, we can probably... Uh, oops, not actually on the right one, am I? This low one here, we can probably... Let that one die a little sooner. But I think all in all, that's a pretty okay patch. with some fairly nice ideas in there. Oh, there's less than one there, no, I'll show. Uh, yeah. Yes. Nice and expressive. Optional bow mode. And bliss out mode. Certainly sounds better on the higher pitched ones, I think. Good. 
good stuff. Just a reminder, this is marketed as a FM synthesizer. <laughs> well, what a surprise this turned out to be a pretty long video. <laughs> wow, um, very unlike me. If you have made it to the end of the video, then as always, uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, if you did find the video interesting, enjoyable, useful, then it's always massively appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then uh, that is an, a good thing to do as well. In my opinion, anyway, your mileage uh, may vary. But anyway, yeah, thank you for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.